turn it over to Jean Durel, and he is going to tell you all about what's going on with providers and how they stay relevant using APIs. Thanks, Andy. Okay. Um, so, thanks everyone for coming to API Days in Amsterdam. I hope you're having a, a great time as much as I do. I think there is a great uh, speakers lineup and great content. Uh, I'm the um, CTO and co-founder of Telestax, uh, based in uh, Austin. Uh, I think the previous days uh, showed a, a number of different perspectives on, uh, on CPaaS. And uh, what I would like to um, talk about today is uh, our perspective in terms of how the service providers, which we have been helping for uh, quite some time, can stay relevant in an uh, API-driven world and how they can actually move forward with, uh, with CPaaS. Um, hold on, sorry about that. Um, Okay, doesn't seem to move. I'm not sure if we can change the next slides. Okay, um, so a little bit about uh, our history first. Um, so we have been incorporated in 2011, so about uh, eight years ago. And we have deep, strong uh, open source roads. So we built one of the biggest uh, telecommunication uh, platform uh, out there uh, called MobiSense, which was later rebranded to Rescom, uh, which was uh, basically providing core telecom network infrastructure and middleware uh, to help service providers becoming more agile and uh, be, uh, being able to uh, help them uh, basically uh, move forward with open source in their core network. Uh, so we sold uh, our software similar to model from Red Hat on a subscription basis. And as we were helping the service providers, uh, the, a the world moved to API and moved to cloud. So we took a step back and, this, uh, and started to think about how with our roots and how with the whole history of helping service providers, can we actually help them as well uh, from a CPA strategy perspective and uh, taking not only the technical side, uh, in view, but also all of the um, sales and marketing aspects as well, and the go-to-market strategy. So we decided to try to, to come up with a, what we call a CPaaS enablement strategy, which is really enabling uh, the service providers to be able to launch CPaaS and stay relevant and competitive in the marketplace, um, and really helping their customers. From a customer experience perspective, uh, those customers are asking for APIs, and asking for more, more flexibility and to embed uh, communication services into their processes. Um, so I'll go quickly on CPaaS. I guess you should know by now what is CPaaS. If not, uh, then you've been sleeping for two days. Um, but the, uh, the idea here is really for the enterprises to embed communication capabilities into their uh, processes and in terms, uh, in, into their uh, business flow. Uh, without having to own the backend and without having to understand much about all of the telecom uh, complexity in terms of dealing with voice and SMS and operating that. So it's really free them in terms of time to market uh, to actually move forward very fast, increase their velocity, increase their time to market in terms of being able to launch services faster uh, and be able to meet their uh, own customer requirements. We. So in light of that, again, uh, tying back to the service providers, uh, what we wanted to do is really help them uh, deploy CPaaS services for the enterprise customers. And there is a number of reasons for that, why it's important, um, and why the CSPs must enter the CPaaS market now. Uh, so the world has moved on. Um, customers and people are expecting omnichannel uh, capabilities and being able to contact um, their um, service providers over multiple channels, and enterprises want to be able to reach uh, their own customers over multiple channels. You could see from various CPaaS providers that they are growing uh, at uh, awesome rates, and you can see that their valuation, uh, as opposed to the revenue, is typically much higher than what uh, service providers uh, are seeing for multiple reasons. One is that um, they are not in a wholesale type of business model anymore. They are in more higher value chain. And this is what we are going to try to describe uh, in this presentation. We'll be describing a really, really real case study in terms of uh, success story about uh, a CSP going to market 
and be able to enter in the higher value margin and be able to uh, make their customers happy in terms of being flexible. Um, so why uh, CSPs uh, can actually still play in the CPaaS world? I heard a number of, thing, a number of uh, speakers, a uh, number of questions in the panel about whether service providers can still uh, actually play in the CPaaS market. I think it's still very much relevant. They, the, the service providers have a lot of assets. Um, first, they already own the enterprises. When you have other uh, CPaaS players that needs to hire a ton of salespeople to actually go uh, direct to enterprises and aggressively sell the CPaaS services, the service provider already own those relationships with their enterprise customers. They already have this trust relationship, and they are able, if they would have CPaaS or if they are able to launch CPaaS, actually benefit from those um, uh, relationship to be able to upsell CPaaS and be able to enter kind of the higher value chain, as well as providing better customers experience, better flexibility uh, to the enterprise customers. They also have a very, I mean, the, the network quality and the quality of service that they offer, uh, they, they own the last mile. So it's the best you can get. So only those aspects in terms of network quality, quality of service, uh, existing customer relationship, and being able to really understand the needs of the enterprise customers uh, are great assets in addition to the core network. There is a lot of core network capabilities they can offer, they can open up to the service providers. We hear a lot of programmable voice, programmable video, programmable messaging. There is uh, things happening in the IoT as well. Um, there is things around geolocation, around AI. So there is a lot of capabilities that are still uh, being developed um, that the service provider can actually expose the enterprise customer. So, uh, for me or for us, the, the, to me, the, the game is not over. The market is uh, pretty big, and you, you can see that it's growing fast. And service providers have a good role to play there as well. Uh, so I'm going to run you through a case study of a real success story that we have with uh, service provider and uh, one of our uh, solution partners as well. Uh, so it's, uh, the company is uh, FCI, which is uh, Floor Coverings International. It's a traditional retail company that's uh, selling uh, carpeting, uh, and they had uh, a lot of call center agents to be able to deal with appointment scheduling. And uh, basically, they were uh, getting for their customers a number of requests in terms of being able to uh, go in uh, more omnichannel uh, capabilities, as well as being able for, for their side uh, to improve their call center efficiency and be able to automate a lot of uh, the manual process that they had. Uh, so they heard about adv advanced appointment scheduling. Uh, what this is, is um, really about AI. Uh, so this is really art artificial intelligence and conversational AI. I'm not sure how many of you actually saw Google Duplex, but you can think that this is basically Google Duplex uh, for the messaging side. So you really have uh, a feel of uh, conversing with an agent on the other end uh, through text messages. Uh, and not with a chatbot. It's not like, okay, press one to reschedule. It's, it really feels conversational. So you really feel engaged and really feel that you have uh, another person on the, on the other end. Uh, so in, in their case, they were able to actually go to market with the AI uh, uh, conversational as a service and being able to deploy an omnichannel strategy. So uh, they had voice. They were able to add SMS and be able to engage their customers over SMS as well and automate the entire process. So they, they were able through the SMS uh, to actually increase their appointment scheduling by 1.5x, uh, which is uh, pretty uh, uh, impressive from a revenue perspective for this customer. Um, so how did they implement it CPaaS? Um, uh, the, the initial requirements was from MCI, uh, FCI, as I mentioned, to be able to automate and provide an omnichannel uh, capabilities and be able to offer, really to listen to their uh, customers and be able to offer them the flexibility to integrate those capabilities into their business processes. Uh, so their uh, service provider, Mattel, was not initially CPaaS enabled. So this is where we basically came in and uh, uh, allowed uh, Mattel, and I'll describe a little bit more about the CPaaS enablement itself, uh, enable uh, this tier two uh, service provider in the US uh, to actually be able to reuse their existing network and be able to provide the CPaaS uh, APIs on top of that. Uh, so that was the first step, to be able to offer APIs. 
uh, but FCI didn't have uh, developers in-house, so they really wanted some kind of point solution, uh, which was important for them to actually go to market. And as part of the CPaaS enablement, it's not only about, okay, you will provide an API and they will come, or you will provide an API and all of a sudden uh, you're generating more revenue. It was really about listening to the uh, enterprise customers and deliver a solution that makes sense for them to improve the customer experience. Um, so we, as part of the CPaaS enablement, we also provide a marketplace, and you probably heard a number of uh, other speakers speaking about marketplace, and this is what this is really about. Uh, a number of enterprises don't have developers, uh, they don't really uh, necessarily understand APIs so much, and they're really looking to solve a pain point in their business. And so we partner with a number of solution providers, and in this case, we partner with a company called Lumin.ai, uh, which is the company that was providing these um, AI uh, services to be able to do the appointment scheduling for the, for the customer. So basically what uh, FCI had to do only was basically to integrate those leads automatically into their, uh, into their process and uh, into their network. Um, so they were able to actually quickly go to market and uh, they started with a POC, so they took one store location and they started to see how the uh, omnichannel experience and the uh, improved call center efficiency uh, will be before basically deploying uh, more globally. And the results were uh, very impressive. So basically with uh, uh, the appointment scheduler, they were able to increase their conversion by 1.5%, uh, sorry, 1.5x, and they were able to decrease the number of uh, agents in the call center. So they were able to win more revenue by getting more conversion, and, but they were also able to reduce their costs uh, because a lot of that was actually automated. Um, so that's for the uh, enterprise customers. Uh, they also were able to basically improve their customer experience. For the service provider, they used to be able, to, they used to sell SMS and voice, so just selling minutes and selling SMS, which doesn't have a lot of value when you just look at a uh, per transaction basis. But uh, in this case, um, the service provider with the CPaaS went to market on the revenue share uh, model with Lumin.ai. Uh, so basically, they were uh, being able to collect revenue on a per lead, per appointment basis done. And basically, with 30 message exchange, they were able to get $6 out of each lead leads being booked. So you can see now that the increase in terms of revenue and in terms of profit margin for the service provider was actually huge. And it was very important for them because they are moving from something that's commoditized, uh, so SMS and voice, to something that's more higher value because they are getting into providing uh, services that are closer to the enterprise customer, uh, which led for them to have a stronger relationship with the enterprise customer because they were able to effectively deliver a solution fast to their enterprise business needs and also have a solution that they can actually replicate in the same vertical, in the retail vertical, to all of the other uh, customers that they have and serving the exact same pain point. Um, for Lumi.ai, uh, the solution provider, uh, in case there is some in the room that uh, uh, are providing solutions as well, the advantage is that they don't have to actually go direct to each enterprise. They are able to leverage basically the service provider sales force uh, and be able to basically get uh, economy of scale and uh, the exponential effect of having a sales force from the service provider that is able to sell their services to their enterprise customers. So it's really the whole ecosystem, uh, probably back from the open source routes, but in that case, the whole collaboration and the whole ecosystem is, is winning in that case. Um, so this kind of a visual representation of that. Uh, so you can see that in, in the center, you have um, the uh, red circle that represents the service provider. Uh, so this is where we come in and we say, okay, we can see pass enable you. So we provide the kind of the lay, uh, yellow uh, outer circle, which is the CPaaS enablement. So this is the API that is surrounding uh, the core network and the core assets of the service provider that they can expose to their enterprise customer, very similarly to how their service, uh, CPaaS player are exposing CPaaS capabilities. So it's really kind of a bring your own network. Uh, so they bring their network and they're able to expose uh, the API capabilities. And then um, on the uh, right-hand side, my right-hand side, the business applications is basically the marketplace. So you see a number of companies uh, uh, like Lumin.ai that I just explained uh, that are point solutions that are managed and productized uh, by dedicated companies. This is really their uh, own business. 
So the service provider don't have to build the application. They can actually leverage a marketplace of applications that they can push to their enterprise customers. So it, it comes not only with the API, again, just having API will not help if you're not solving a, a customer pain point, uh, but being able to provide those point solutions as well to their enterprise customers. And for the business customers, the enterprise customers, really the value proposition is all around uh, improving the customer experience and being able to uh, have uh, a number of capabilities that they didn't have with their service provider before. Um, so, in terms of uh, the CPaaS enablement platform that we provide, so you can see on the left hand side uh, on the solution modules that uh, we provide uh, typical CPaaS capabilities for the service provider. So, this is what they will offer to their enterprise customers in terms of programmable voice, uh, programmable uh, messaging. Uh, visual designer is actually something uh, interesting as well. Uh, so we talk a lot about APIs. Um, there is a number of enterprise customers that don't have any APIs. They don't have developers, they don't understand uh, the developer world. And this is where the kind of low-code, no-code tools, uh, where you don't have to understand coding to be able to uh, do a visual flow of, um, uh, of your business process and the communication uh, how communication integrates with it. So you can actually play uh, with a visual tool that allows you to actually build application without having to learn to code. Uh, so it really helps in terms of experimenting very quickly in terms of building uh, proof of concept of application, MVPs, and then go to market. Um, so that's really in terms of what the service providers can offer to the enterprise customers. And for the service provider themselves, uh, what we offer is uh, a fully white label a platform, meaning that when they actually offer the CPaaS services, it really looks like it's coming from the service provider. It doesn't look like it's coming from Telestax, it's really coming from the service provider. So everything is um, trying to reduce as much as possible the friction and accelerate the time to market. So you can uh, basically pick your own brand, even the documentation is completely white label, so that uh, as you get more features from our platform, you don't have to update the documentation, it's completely taken care of for you. And you can just focus on being able to sell customer uh, pain points. Um, your network, uh, again, um, this is one of the biggest assets of the service provider. Uh, so we tell them, bring your own network, you connect to the platform, and you're able to keep uh, the last mile, you're able to keep the quality of service uh, your customers are used to, and be able to expose that through APIs. Uh, as I was mentioning, all of that is more the technical part. <clears throat> uh, we offer also offer what we call the CPaaS playbook. Uh, which is being able to actually help the service provider from a channel enablement perspective on the sales and marketing. Uh, because uh, they are not used to sell CPaaS, they are not API companies, uh, so the goal is to help them understand what CPaaS is and how to market it and how to sell it uh, with their sales team. So really train the sales team, help them with uh, white label collateral as well uh, that they can deliver to their enterprise customers in terms of su success stories like this one, um, that were uh, successful with uh, other customers that they can help the enterprise customer uh, to win uh, in the marketplace. Um, so, um, two things is, um, if you're a service provider, <laughs> uh, maybe think about uh, how uh, CPaaS is really critical. It's, to me, similar to the digital transformation or the, um, uh, the move, if a, if a company doesn't become a software company, it's poised to die with the, all of the uh, competi competition in the, in the marketplace, as you can see with Uber and all of the, uh, the, the companies, uh, the, the unicorns coming into play. Uh, so you really need to be able to move forward with CPaaS, and uh, there is nothing preventing you from, from starting small, do small POCs and uh, being able to show the traction. Uh, you can actually pick a couple of uh, use cases in your vertical in the vertical that you're targeting your enterprise customers and be able to experiment with that. Solve one use case, one pain point, go to market, but launch. Uh, I think the, uh, the pressure from the CPaaS provider, uh, from, from the CPaaS players out there is really big. What we have been seeing in the, in the marketplace is that service provider were telling us about a year ago, yeah, that's fine, CPaaS is good, we'll look into it, it seems nice and uh, we, we kind of get it, so we'll, we'll see what uh, the market tells us. And then they come back one year later, and they lost a big bank. They lost uh, a big healthcare provider. And then they are, they are understanding that the pressure is on uh, to be able to launch CIPA services. And uh, 
that they will lose more and more customers if they don't provide what the enterprise customer are asking for, which is more flexibility and being able to move fa fa faster to market uh, to compete in the marketplace. So there is a number of uh, CPaaS enablers. You can talk to us, of course. I'll, I'll be around. Uh, but schedule a time to connect, and uh, uh, that's uh, pretty much it on uh, my presentation. So I still have uh, three minutes for questions. On the um, chatbot, if you want to try it on the AI conversational, um, there is uh, actually a, a number you can, you can test to see how a conversational feels. I'm not sure how well it will work in roaming for people, uh, but even if you want to try it when you're back at home, uh, if you're in the US, uh, feel free to try it out. Uh, and you'll see how what I was speaking about in terms of being conversational with the, uh, with the, with the agent, with the AI. So, John, very nice talk. It sounds to me like the role of the enabler that you're speaking about historically was called the integrator. And the integrator was one who took the hardware and made it work with either the telco or the enterprise switch. Are you seeing the same type of selling approach that we used to see with integrators in order to get them on board to, to resell Telesex? So again, I think the, the velocity and the time to market is critical. Uh, when you have a uh, service provider that lost key customers, uh, they don't want to spend two years and integrate uh, in stuff into their network or build it themselves. So what we've been seeing is that a number of service providers are moving and moving fast because they understand the, the market pressure and the threat. Uh, so they want to just interconnect and be able to expose uh, their APIs. From a system integrator perspective, I would say on one piece, more on the application side. If they don't have developers that can actually build solutions for their enterprise customers, that's where uh, they would come into play. But they were still looking for point solutions that they can actually go and sell. Are these MSPs who have telecom clients? Are these small regional telcos? Who, who are the ones who are losing and all of a sudden need your solution? Where would you lump them in? Okay. into a category. Good question. So uh, a couple of examples that we have, uh, some that I can speak about, some, some not yet. But by example, we launched with uh, Telcom Indonesia uh, in Asia Pacific, and they lost a number of key customers that started to drive the pressure. From a wholesale perspective, they were seeing actually the market pressure and also the opportunity, seeing that, uh, as I mentioned in the talk, uh, from a pure SMS commoditization perspective, the value of an SMS is pretty small. When you reach and be able to provide a point solution to your customers, then the, the, the profit margin and the, the value proposition is much higher. So they were really kind of seeing the, the two approaches and be able to basically win on, the, on both sides. What's the next big thing that's going to happen in the world of Telestacks with enablers, resellers, integrators, channel partners? What do you see the next move as? Uh, I think for us, the, the, the biggest importance is to be able to enable more and more service providers so that they can stay competitive in the marketplace and also drive uh, usage and drive use cases. Uh, I saw in the past uh, two days a number of um, companies like Sephora, like ING, speaking on how they went with uh, Twilio, by example, in terms of go-to-market. And um, what I would like to see is similar success stories in terms of service providers, uh, being able to say how this is how we retain or how we win back customer because we're able to provide SIPA services. So this is really kind of the main driver. And as I mentioned, kind of the whole go-to-market, not only the technical piece, but the whole go-to-market strategy in terms of enabling more and more service providers to actually go to market. Great. Any questions from the audience? Going once, going twice. Thank you, Jean. Thanks, everyone.